Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ambar Bus Videos YouTube channel. I'm Ambar Bus Videos, otherwise known as Ambar Central, depending on what day of the week and what video you're watching. And welcome to Gainsborough Bus Station with one of the most popular buses in the game. I do also love this bus, um, the lovely Dennis Trident, a proper original Dennis Trident. I do love my Trident 2s, but nothing can beat a proper old Dennis Trident. Um, the one that we have in game does perfectly reflect that. There's also enhancement packs and bits like that, although I have still got the very basic Dennis Trident um, Transbus pack. And then I haven't changed the bounce as of yet, um, and I probably will do in the future. You join us in Gainsborough. Now, the bus is a stagecoach bus, but it's not in a stagecoach livery. We're doing a little bit of a crossover in this video. We're doing a little bit of a what-if sort of situation. So People's Buses, the original People's Buses operation um, before it um, has restarted. If you want details on it restarting, check out my People's Bus E400 video that I did um, in the Omsi 2 world. I did that a few weeks ago, so go and check that one out. However, the original operation, they sold to Stagecoach just a few months ago with the original blue and pink livery. And um, Stagecoach um, took over their buses and quite a lot of their routes. Some of the vehicles that Stagecoach have got, some of these Dennis Tridents, um, have been painted into the new Stagecoach Specialist livery. However, there are still a few looking like this that haven't been painted yet. They've got the Stagecoach name on, they operate dedicated school contracts and will likely not be painted um, throughout their entire lives. It's more the case um, that they're probably going to be running them now until they can get cascades from elsewhere um, and then they'll likely um, be withdrawn and scrapped. So I thought we'd do a little bit of a what if. What if one of these ended up transferring to the East Midlands? East Mids were short of buses, as they have been known um, to do that in the past. So the begged areas to transfer buses in, and um, the Mersey have sent one of these. And in this video, we are going to take it on the 95 service. So we're going to go from here to Retford via Leverton. Now doing the 1640 work, and that I believe is the last one through to Retford. So it should be okay. It does come off, I believe, comes off a school run, potentially. I think it's a school run it comes off. So having a bus like this on the allocation is rather accurate. So let's get ourselves into gear. And round to the stand. So we've got all the lights on already. There we go. What? Hey, driver. Hello. So the registration doesn't bear any resemblance at all to the batch of vehicles that um, Stagecoach inherited from people's buses. It's just sort of a, a period-ish registration. I believe most of theirs are LV52s that they inherited. Um, but I just, I thought we'd just go with a sort of a, a period-related registration. I still find it very strange driving a bus in this livery um, with the new Stagecoach names and logos on. Very, very strange. And what makes it even stranger is the vehicles that People's Bus um, sold on to Stagecoach, the Tridents, were in fact ex-Stagecoach Tridents. Now, you'll see inside, they have all been refurbished. They got full of refurbished moquette. It was quite a, a People's Bus staple to have this style of moquette inside during the height of the operation. They refurbished pretty much everything that they acquired. Um, into this style maquette. So, but despite that, despite that maybe putting quite a few of your sensors off, the vehicles that they do have um, from People's Bus at Stagecoach were in fact new to Stagecoach. Now the weird thing is, and it took quite a lot of people by surprise, that when they, including myself, that when they acquired the buses, um, from people's buses Even though some of them had original numbers inside base plates inside stuff like that with the original numbers on them Stagecoach didn't give them their original fleet numbers. In fact, they just added them on to the more recent um, and the, the the latest Dennis Trident um, ALX 400 batches purchased so they didn't actually um, give them their old fleet numbers now, I don't know if this is through fear of creating an absolutely huge gap in the numbers, as obviously all the rest of the vehicles um, around the sister numbers have since been withdrawn and scrapped. 
or what it was, but they've these older Dennis Tridents have now been added as numerically the newest Dennis Tridents that Stagecoach operate. Despite the fact that they are a fair few years older um, than the vehicles that they sort of had the sister numbers to them. So it's quite a, quite a strange one, um, to be fair. I'm going to get a screenshot of this, even though I am sort of mid-break, because it does, the livery looks really nice in the sunlight, and I remember that this bus is a pain to get a nice screenshot of because of the camera angles that you get. So that's probably the best that we're going to manage. Um, oh, I need to move, I just need to pan that closer, I think. So about getting the angles with this, I do need to get the do need to get one of the enhancements that includes new camera angles um, for this. I really, really do. I mean, I've done it with the 200 MMC, and the camera angles on that now are just are just absolutely amazing. But yeah, it was really, really odd that they didn't retain um, their previous fleet numbers. It took quite a lot of people by surprise, um, as I say, including myself. It would have made more sense for them to sort of retain their old numbers. An example of this is all of the X First London um, B90 or Gemini 2, the LK 59s that First Halifax and First Huddersfield have. Now they've purchased them um, via Ensign bus dealer before First, well, just bought Ensign. Makes it easy to buy buses that way, doesn't it? If you just buy the company, um, it sort of saves if they've just bought a batch of buses, it saves you a bit of cash. Um, however, they bought these, bought the B9s, um, they'd, some of them were acquired via CT Plus and um, sort of via Ensign through, like, from CT Plus locally in Yorkshire and other operators. But they all had their original base plates in. So the logical thing is, and, and it's what they did, um, including the Voifi B9s that they've got um, in Sheffield as well, they restored all of their original fleet numbers from all of the batches when they were all new to first bus in London. That makes a lot more sense, because if you've got original fleet numbers, and especially like first, they don't like to reuse numbers over and over on, on different vehicles and stuff like that, so that they don't run out of numbers and the batches are retained, and it just makes a little bit more sense to sort of see the batches that you've got and the periodic numbers that they had when they were new. They've all been given their original fleet numbers back. So it's like 361, 36, 37, 45. Like, yes, there are gaps in those numbers. They'll probably never require, reacquire the vehicles in the middle of the gaps. It'd be, it'd be incredibly surprising if they did, they'd get very lucky. However, they have just returned their original numbers. It's like the vehicles that they've got um, in Huddersfield now, bearing in mind the Halifax B9 Gemini 2s have now transferred over to Huddersfield, the school fleet 1s, LK 59s. So all of the LKs are now based at Huddersfield. So they have the likes of 73, 75, 78, 79, 81, 84, 86, 90, 99 and 37800. Now, yes, there are gaps. There are gaps in those numberings. Um, and some of you might be like, oh, there's gaps, there's gaps. Um, on both videos, there's gaps. Um, but it makes more sense to keep them in those numbers instead of numerically putting them all together because it makes sense consistently in the registration plates and when you're looking at it from an allocation perspective as someone that oversees it all you can see their three sevens so you can see that they are the age of them in contrast to the other three sevens that are all around like 0859 plate like 0959 plates so they all con they all are, are consistent with the with sort of the ages of the other vehicles. So it's like the three six ones they're all eleven plates. So you go further up on the three six ones and onto three six twos, and you go to twelve plates, and it just makes a lot more sense to keep your numberings like that. If you especially if you're not going to reuse your numbers ever, it makes more sense to keep the numbers consistent like that. Keep them together, so it makes more sense so you can track your fleet. Um, and obviously there's old records there and you don't have to take out the base plates and all of that lot so it just, make, it just makes a bit more sense I mean there was probably a theory behind why Liverpool did it um, when they took over the people's bus tridents um, there's probably some periodic way of doing it and um, probably because Stagecoach want them to be temporary vehicles they want them all to be stuck together so that 
when they do get shot of them, they can tell that they've got shot of the entire batch and they don't lose vehicle numbers and stuff like that. So that that could be the case, as they have all the vehicles. But even then, it would have been nice to see the original fleet numbers reverted to. Because then you'd have just had this um, idea that you've just got all of these 174s and 5s and then you've just got like a small handful of about two or three 172s left. And it just looks really confusing on the numbers. I think it'll be quite cool, but... Hey ho, each, each operator has their own different way of doing it, and that old lady's going around in circles. I suppose it's a, it's a way of sorts to kill time. So the route that we're driving is the 95. We've done a few videos on the 95. It's the latest um, Lincolnshire route um, by the very talented Mr Moose to be introduced. Um, that rhymed unintentionally. Um, there's the 95 and the 95A. The 95A is short working. That's the trip after this one. Is there some other person wants to get off the race? I'm probably going to pull in and let them off because I've only just noticed. Are we staying on then? Okay. Okay, I'm going to assume you're not that desperate to get off here. We're just going to pretend you're having the chin wag with drive. That's how we're going to. That's how we're going to pretend. So it runs between Retford and Gainsborough does the 95. I was quite excited when it released because I've been to... I have been to Gainsborough, but I have been to Retford by bus a couple of times. Um, and I've nearly done this route in real life. I mean, I've done the route that these buses come off. So in real life, when they get to Retford, um, they come off and do a 99 to Doncaster and back. Uh, I've done the 99 loads. I've done the 29 loads. I've done the 43 loads. I just haven't done the 90, and I've done the 47 um, local Retford routes. That I imagine um, the 47 could be one of the next routes to be introduced. It would make sense to do the local 47 route. Um, again, I'm not Mr Moose. Mr Moose will have their own ideas and their own plan for the map. Um, but possibly the introduction of the 47 may be wise, because from the 47... Um, you can then sort of expand it onto 99s, 29s, stuff like that. So, or even the 97, the 97 being the slower route between Gainsborough and Retford. So when I've done them, I just haven't done the 95, and I haven't done the 95 because it tends to be the case that uh, when I catch a bus, um, I tend to tick it on the 99, and then because it goes onto the 95, I don't tend to try and go for a, go for a ride on a bus twice if, if I can help it, I tend to jump off and go in something else um, at Retford, because Retford's quite a hub for um, some older bits of kit. However, that does mean that Tridents do appear on the 95. They don't appear in this liver on the 95, um, but they do appear on the 95. Um, and I have done a number of Tridents on the 99 before that have done the 95 afterwards. Now, we used to go down there and do all the Presidents. Um, unfortunately, the Presidents have now gone. That is a shame. Um, I absolutely love them. They're tremendous motors. With those I met MX and KV53s. They were absolutely tremendous um, bits of kit with them. Um, some of like just my favourite stagecoach tridents um, because they were just absolute rockets. And I've got plenty of videos on this channel, and some even made it onto the Admiral Central channel. Those bustles were that good. So do go and check out those videos if you haven't already. I highly recommend them. There's a video that I've got of 18038 and um, that I believe was MX53 FMA, I think. Um, go and check that one out on the Ammo Central channel. Um, go and check out the video of that. That was an absolutely tremendous run on the 99. Um, that was that was one of me one of my all-time favourite Trident runs I've done. One of my all-time favourites. So, but it is a shame they've gone. I mean, games were still running Tridents. They're just not as old, unfortunately. The sort of 05, 55, 06 plated Tridents that they run now. Um, that, as I say, is is a shame that the Tridents aren't as old as they were. But at the end of the day, we've still got Tridents. They're still rocking about, and you can still enjoy them on the 95s and 99 rotations. So we can't complain. 
And with the vehicle shortage that they've got at Long Sutton Out Station at the moment, um, the Tridents are appearing out in service a lot more as the MMCs that usually do the Interconnect 100 and then they have a spare one that goes onto other diagrams. Um, they've had to send those vehicles, they've had to send at least two of them, I believe, to Long Sutton um, for the 505s. So the time is now, if you do want to get some um, Trident action in and, you want to, and you're doing a bit of a longer trek, the time is right um, for, you, for you to head over to Retford, head over to Gainsborough and get some Gainsborough based Tridents in. I would arguably say that the better location to get guaranteed Tridents in um, is Retford because the 47s during school term um, get a trident on them and that's the local route and then there's usually the 1345.99 that comes off a of school in the morning that tends to be a trident as well And then you do also get the 11.35 working, um, that if there is a spare trident, um, is a trident on the 95 and the 99. Now back in the day, the 11.35 off Doncaster 99 was guaranteed a trident. Um, it was entirely wholly guaranteed one. However, nowadays it is a hit and miss between MMCs. As I say, at Long Sutton, so you've got more chance of getting a trident at the moment. Um, and occasionally E300s, um, occasionally, but I believe during school time it does, it does come off, um, come off a school in the morning or potentially goes on one in the afternoon, so you do have more chance of getting a trident on that. So a friend of mine has managed to go on pretty much every single Gainsborough based Trident bar one at the moment. Um, he's done a lot better than me. Um, I was the one that introduced him to the Trident um, based at Gainsborough and the tremendous runs you could do on the 99. I introduced him to him. Um, and unfortunately, my life's quite busy. Um, so I haven't been able to go there in recent months. Thankfully, he's been going over there recent months. Um, he's been recording. Um, all the different vehicles that they use um, and ticking off the Trident so he's got a pretty decent archive of Trident so you'll be able to find him on YouTube um, just type in some of the fleet numbers his videos will come up first he's filmed quite a lot of them on the, on the 99s and 47s so he's done quite well I do need to do a proper trip round there again um, probably from July onwards permitted the O6s and the O5s are still about um, that this should be I don't think there's any more new buses expected at the moment. I imagine anything else that is new is probably going to get diverted to Manchester at the moment um, because Manchester is um, is struggling a little bit. So I think anything that is, is new coming out of the ADL factory now is, is pretty much for Manchester um, with all the loan vehicles that they've currently got for the B network. If you haven't already, do go and watch my B network videos on the Ampmore Central channel. Um, they're really, really fun to, to film. Um, I mean, at the time I'm filming this, I'm going to be doing another trip there tomorrow. This video is out a few days before it, it's getting released. Um, just a heads up on that one. Um, I think we're talking, yeah, if we're talking a few days before. So um, I'll have already been by the time this video is released. But yes, I'm doing another trip to the B Network. And I'm also doing another trip of the weekend to the B Network. Um, just to have a little explore around it. Now I've got some videos I plan to film immediately. Um, there's some videos that I'm, I'm wanting to film once everything's settled down. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm just enjoying the fact that there's just really random things like stagecoach running the 184. Um, that no matter how many times I say it in my head, and no matter how many times I look on the bus time to dog tracker, I, and, and even the fact I have been on a 184 run by stagecoach, I still can't get it in my head that stagecoach under the B network and I'm running the 184 between Huddersfield and Oldham. I have done a video on it, on my first experience of it. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't the most it wasn't the most positive first experience, I'm afraid. Um, but it's still a video that's worth a watch. Um, there's a bit of a bit of an honest honest review there. Um, it's an honest review. I mean, it, it's when you watch the video, you'll understand why it wasn't the best first experience, but you'll also understand why I wasn't that cross. 
I wasn't angry, I wasn't stressed out. It was it was more the case of unfortunately it was circumstantial. I mean when one operator takes over I want to be bus. Um, when one operator takes over an entire new area and replaces goodness knows how many operators and starts managing with a brand new management team, a new depot. Unfortunately, odd TV issues are bound to happen on the first weekday. So it was it was as expected and as, as you're watching that video as i say if you haven't already do go and check it out as you're all watching that video you'll entirely understand why i wasn't wasn't cross wasn't angry i'd, I'd planned it in for something to potentially go wrong i don't understand why i'm grateful that the bus ran so as i say do do check out do check out that video um at some point As you'll get a bit of a bit of a better idea as to as to what I mean, um, as it's uh, as I say, it's a, it's a rather circumstantial video. I do absolutely love this route. Uh, must just say, absolutely love the 95. I'm driving this route more and more at the moment as a bit of a reminder to myself um, that I do actually need to when I when I settle back in uh, in Sheffield very very soon. Um, settle back in. I am going to have to devote a couple of days, uh, possibly even weeks, depending on how I go, um, to Lincolnshire. I just, unfortunately, having not been there, I've, I've just missed out on all of these new vehicle cascades and bits like that. So I really need to devote some time over there. Um, I was lucky enough to devote some time. I didn't, I didn't film it um, in a vlog sense. I, at, at the time, I travelled. Um, in all honesty, I wanted a day off, um, but there is a backseat video um, on the Anmore Central channel and seemed to be on here. Um, I went on that day, I went on a couple of Tridents and I did the X Road Car B7 Hour of the Eclipse Urban um, on the 99. Um, really good day was that, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but as I say, I, I just I didn't film it and I just, I just didn't film it because I just wanted a bit of time. A bit of personal time, um, just just film, just riding on buses. Sometimes I get like that. I mean, everybody does. Um, if you ask any other YouTuber, they'll get like that, where you, you can you can film and film and film. But sometimes it's nice to just go out, cut with friends, ride around on buses, and have a bit of a jolly and have a bit of a laugh. But I will be back um, filming some more in the East Mids. I mean, I, my video is slightly out of date now that I did originally sampling Tridents around um, around Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire. Um, I do need to do need to update that um, because that is just precedence, um, pretty much precedent Tridents, um, what have. So I'll, I'll get that video updated. I'll do some on the on the current Trident stock. Probably end up doing some sort of round trip, so I'd likely a, a, a trip to trip to Retford, a trip from um, Retford to Worksop and then Worksop up, I would imagine, um, something something along the lines of that um, would be quite nice. I mean, we're talking a Trident on the 99, a Trident on the 43, and a Trident on the 19, a 19A, or um, if there's not one on there, I've got the other options at 25 up to Donny and 77 to Chesterfield, so there's quite a few options um, from Worksop. And they do tend to spread their tridents about. There's always something of interest on some route. Even if it is just a local go around town service. I've forgotten how, how fun it is to drive this in real life. Um, it, they are absolutely tremendous motors. Um, I had the pleasure quite recently of driving one of these in real life. Unfortunately, it wasn't wasn't the healthiest motor um that, that's why i've not i've not bragged about it um, on the main channel unfortunately it wasn't wasn't the healthiest it was a, it, the bus was a little bit poorly and um, it wasn't wasn't at its prime however it was a bus that i've, I've sort of seen around that had a little bit of a ch childhood connection to me and a um, bit of a childhood connection and i have wanted to drive with a proper dennis trident for quite a while so it was it was a bit of a childhood dream as i say it wasn't in the best state unfortunately but still um, a childhood dream ticked off the books so it was quite nice i do look forward to driving another one of these in the future i don't know when that'll be but i'll try and try and sort something and um, to drive one of these in the future again um because I, I do absolutely love them they are they are tremendous motors
As I forgot how quick this is in the game, it tends to, it does, it absolutely flies in this game. I did genuinely forget how quick it was. Oh, we've done a little bit of curb mounting. I got a bit too eager. Let's get ourselves off the curb. So I did have to move some files across to get this repaint to work correctly. Um, as I say, I believe I am on the wrong... Um, wrong version of the of the trident i believe there is an enhanced one um, i just haven't got around to starting to use it and download it i mean it was a similar case with the e200 mmc exactly the same i just hadn't got around to it so i do i do need to get it sorted because as you all saw i absolutely love that new enhanced version of the mmc i mean it's just the screenshot angles that are just absolutely tremendous Oh, we're doing for time. Oh, we, we're quite early now. I think this is the bit, though, that we ended up really early last last video as well. This is the bit where you just end up stupidly early as you go into Retford. You, you sort of, like we have been, you're quite, you're quite close to time throughout the rest of it. And then this section, you, you, sort of, you, you end up cutting it quite fine. Now, where's the sun? Lost this. Oh, the sun's there. Okay, okay. So that might not, that might not work how I wanted it to. Oh, that. Oh gosh, that still looks nice. Even though the line isn't particularly where we want it, um, that still. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, it's this camera. It's getting the angles. It's all about the angles. Your problem is, is you've got to zoom out, but the more you zoom out, the more you'll get a perfect angle. However, the more difficult it is to manoeuvre it. I do wish that um, that wasn't there, that lamp post. That's slightly ruining the, the kind of thing I'm going for, if I'm honest. That'll do. Let's make progress. Let's make sure the bus is happy with its game and then let's make progress. There's a few of you say that you, you like how I, how I film these OMSI videos. I'm not, I'm not your conventional OMSI driver when it comes to uh, maps. I mean, in, in, in real life, I'm much, uh, much more of a slower driver than I am in game. I kind of emphasise that enough. However, when it comes to driving in OMSI, I just like to have the opportunity. I've mentioned this before, but I like to have the opportunity to just absolutely rag buses because it's not something you get to do in real life because it is real life you've, you've got your, your passenger safety you've got your safe driving you've got your speed limits um stuff like that you, you've got to obviously you, you do drive carefully in real life as a, as a bus driver you have a lot of responsibility however in omsi 2 it is a simulator and you get to have all of these different types of buses and semi-realistic routes i mean real routes like this and it's just nice to just have the opportunity to just absolutely floor it um, and sort of just see what the buses are capable of. Hopefully not into hedges, because we've got close twice there, but it's nice to just absolutely rag them, have the opportunity to do it. Sometimes a bit of a stress relief if you've had quite a bad day driving, although to be fair, if I have been driving for the day, I don't tend to. My first go-to thing isn't, oh, let's load up Omsi 2 and drive what I've just been driving in real life in the game. I don't, that is not my 
not my go-to. I think for some people that is. Some people that is. However, the last thing I want to be doing after I've spent a, a 10 hour shift driving in real life is to actually do any virtual driving. It's just, that's not my drive. So I tend to do these, I tend to record these videos on my days off. Record them on my days off when I've got a couple of days off. That kind of thing. So but as I say, everybody's different. I mean, there's some people who probably drive quicker in real life than they do on the game. Um, most likely, there's probably, there's probably some people who are, who are more confident in real life and like to act quite very, very professional on here and, and what have and, and that lot. And as I say, there's some people that, that, don't, that don't drive in real life and again, they drive quite cautious. It's just me, it's just my way around this. Let's see how quick we can get from one side of the route to the other and let's see what sounds we can get the bus to make. Um, and let's see if we can just absolutely floor it because at the end of the day, we're, we're having a run here and you can also hear the engine of the bus being absolutely wrecked, so it, it makes for an interesting video. And you know, and you get to see the route pretty quick as well, so we're not sat there on a video watching it for about an hour where somebody does a 15 minute introduction and then drives the route quite slowly. It's, for me, it's jumping bus, jumping bus. Um, I've usually already started the bus up, built the air up before I start filming, and then it's get on to stand, load passengers, couple of screenshots stopped, and we're there. As I say, it's not everybody's style, but there are quite a few of you, judging by the views that I get, that do enjoy it. So I'm sort of mixing the Hong Kong map content in with um, the UK stuff at the moment. Um, I'm sort of seeing how the mix goes, I'm looking at the viewing figures and stuff like that. If there is anything specifically that I do for the channel that sort of makes you view certain videos more than others, um, don't hesitate to um, let me know in the comments. Um, it, it's all a little bit of market research. Um, I mean, it was quite... I mean, when, I, when I moved the OMSI2 content from the Anmore Central channel to the Bus Videos channel, I knew we were going to get a slight drop in views, purely because the Anmore Central channel is a lot more well known. So as a result, videos get liked a lot more and um, more people view them as a result. So the Animal Bus Videos channel is a little bit smaller. I mean, it's growing now, thanks to all your support. Again, if you haven't already, do click the like button on this video if you've enjoyed it, if you've got to this point, and um, do subscribe so you don't miss out on any like. But the channel is growing, and, and as I say, we, we're getting to the stage now where we're in the territory where certain videos that I've done in the Omta 2 series on this channel get the same amount of views, if not slightly more views, than what they used to get in the Animal Central channel. That I think is absolutely tremendous. Um, so I thought it was de definitely the best way to do it. I mean, this channel is is just constant videos. You're bored, there's always a video on here to watch. There's always something to watch on here. Um, I mean, there's, there's 23 videos released every single week on this channel. So it's it, it's quite a, quite a variety of content to watch. It keeps you busy for a couple of hours. Um, and then your Monday, your Wednesday, your Saturday, you get um, a bunch of seven videos every day. Um, that you watch it, watch it, five o'clock. So you have that. Oh, I'm in ref now. And then you get these lovely under two videos where you can sit back, get a cup of tea, um, join in, join in with, join in with the conversation. I'm having here, here's some in-depth industry-related conversation, something like some sort of random discussion topic that we end up talking about. I mean, a lot of it recently, and it will continue to be, is on, is on franchising, um, purely because it is such a hot topic at the moment. Um, it's quite easy to discuss it. I mean, in this format, it's just driving the bus and the chinwag, um, and it's quite easy to discuss it. And as I say, some of you, as some of you, I believe, watch these videos for the driving. Um, some of you watch it for the routes, but some of you, some of you watch it for both. And some of you watch it exclusively, I think, just for the conversations. And I've noticed in the comments, whatever you watch it for, you are more than welcome here. Um, again, if there is anything that sort of brings you into a specific video that I've done in the Omni 2 series, do let me know, because I do continue to expand, and it, it's good to it's good to know what's appealing to people, so I know what to how, what to record or how to phrase videos or um, what what to discuss, what topics to discuss, that kind of thing. Because I know the Bendy Bus videos are popular, I am going to be doing a couple more of them where I just give myself absurd Bendy Bus challenges um, and just seeing what we what we can and can't do. 
um, with an articulated bus. To cut any spear, I didn't see those red lights. I was that busy looking at the arrow all the way down there that the red lights sort of blended in. I think it's the lighting that we're going with because the sun is setting in game. There we go, as in real life, we're, we're blinding it up for the Doncaster 99 service, as you would in real life, and the 95 would come in and then go straight out on a, on a 99. So it's, it, I've been to Retford that much, I even know what stand the 99 picks up from. Because <coughs> I've caught it, I've caught it that much. And the weather spoons in Retford quite nice, as it's right next to the bus station, so what you can do. Is what I used to do when they did the. We're talking a couple of years ago now, and uh, when they did the three ninety nine meal and a drink deals for lunch, um, small plates. What I used to do is I'd, I'd get the eleven thirty five in. Um, I'd get the eleven thirty five bus in. I'd get there for about sort of quarter past twelve, and I'd have till thirteen forty five. So I'd take a, four, a couple of photos of buses, um, a couple of photos of buses. There's a bus packed in the stands. Bus packed in stand there. So, I mean, what time are we on? 17 10, so it won't be leaving until 45 probably. So, we'll go. We'll go into layover. There we go. I think they sum it up with the lights and this. But yeah, I'd go and so sit in the Weatherspoons. It's quite literally directly ahead of us in real life. Um, I'd go and sit in there, have my lunch, um, and then about half an hour before the bus was due to leave, I'd wander over, over to Redford bus station again, um, see what bus it is, take a couple more photos and wait on stand for it to leave at 13.45. It was absolutely a lovely way of doing it. Um, really, really was. If you do go to Redford, I do recommend it. However, nowadays, prices have gone up and all of that has changed. But with all of that in mind, as I say, the bus is blinded up for the 99 run that we're not going to do because it isn't yet in the game. However, you never know, in 12 months' time, we might genuinely be doing a 95, then a 99. Um, now, when you can do that, um, I will be doing those two routes back-to-back, -back, I can almost guarantee. We might, might even be back to one or two live streams at that point, we'll have to see, um, without getting everybody excited. But with all of that in mind, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have done, do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to the Am Marvelous Videos YouTube channel for more content like this from the simulation section with OMSA videos up to twice a week, as well as an archive of over 6,000 backseat and engine focused public transport videos from the UK and beyond. With buses, trams, trains, and more, there's something on there for everyone with an additional 21 of those videos added every week. Once again, I would like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will see you all in the next video. Make goodbye for now. Bye.